Well, good morning. Welcome to worship. I always love being able to start worship with our bell choir. Uh, it's just so much fun. Uh, before we begin, we've got some announcements. Uh, next week, we have our noisy offering, and that will be going to uh, the Salvation Army. So that helps a lot of people, so remember to bring your change for that noisy offering on December 19th. That, that's already next week. Oh, December goes quickly, everyone. Um, poinsettia deadline is coming up. Uh, if you look, you'll see that it's on uh, December 17th. We can still accept forms uh, after that day, but there aren't guarantees that names will make it into the bulletin. Uh, so please, if you're considering bringing in a poinsettia or uh, donating money for a poinsettia, please get that in as soon as you can. Um, also next week, we have our Christmas cantata. That's at both worship services. Um, so at 8.30 and at 10.30. And today, at our second service, we have our children's program. So if you're here in person, that means you have to stay uh, for the second service as well, right? No? No? Okay. It will also be on Facebook, so you can watch it later in the week. Uh, it should be a fun time celebrating this Christmas season. Um, also, uh, we have a meal coming up this Wednesday. We've got turkey supreme sandwiches uh, with chips and root beer floats. I'm sorry. I, I had to pause there. Root beer floats, you guys. Woo. I'm excited for a meal on Wednesday, um, but keep in mind that uh, as we get closer to Christmas, we'll be taking a break on the meals until the new year. So this is our last meal uh, for this Wednesday evening. So keep that in mind. We also have a healing service coming up uh, on Wednesday, December 22nd. There are a ton of other things to take a look at in here. We've got a lot more going on. Um, we're always still looking for volunteers, for worship services, especially for Christmas Eve. Um, we've got a lot of services on Christmas Eve, so that means we need a lot of volunteers. So if you're interested, please check our worship volunteers list out there. Uh, I think that's everything I've got. So... Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we'll join in our gathering hymn. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly and fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. We'll take a moment for silent reflection. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. 
We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked upon you with favor. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High God, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine grace. God strengthens you anew to follow in the way of peace. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. We continue our preparations for the arrival of love of God in Christ Jesus. We look for the love of God to enter our government, our society, our surroundings, and our hearts. We know that God's love changes everything, and so we join together saying, as we light our third Advent candle, we pray for the coming of the love of God in Jesus, the child who comes to lead us. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the preaching of John, that rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with the word. The psalm today is from Isaiah, the 12th chapter, verses 2 to 6. We will read it responsibly. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might, and has become my salvation. And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations. Proclaim that this name is exalted. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The reading for today is from Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses four to seven. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, 
Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So many, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Now, sometimes I forget if I've shared a story before, but I'm sharing this story today because it's about being overwhelmed. And one of the times I was most overwhelmed in my life, and I know I was overwhelmed because my mom told me I was, and I mean, she knows me better than anyone, but our son Adam, if you recall, had broken his femur way back, and um, he was in the hospital. And he had a body cast after traction, a body cast for six weeks. And then they took the cast off. And you have that feeling like, oh, okay, good. We're done with this. It was hard. But he had, like, his leg was terrible. It was, like, all beat up from this cast. And it was like it was, had sores on it. It was like burns um, underneath this cast. And that next day after he had the cast off, my mom and dad came to take care of him because it was a Wednesday and I was going to be here on a Wednesday. And my mom called me in the middle of the day and she said, Kathleen, you have to come home. Adam's leg is just really bad. And I went home and his leg was really bad and I needed to take him to the clinic and they treated it like they treat burns. But my mom said to me, in that moment when I came home, that that is the worst I've ever seen you, the most overwhelmed you've ever been because I thought we were kind of at the end of something and we weren't. I think we've all had that feeling of being overwhelmed and not really knowing which way to turn. And so we ask ourselves, well, what am I going to do? What should we do in this situation? That's the very question that the crowds ask John today. They say to John, what should we do? He is speaking to the crowds who have come to be baptized him. And he warns them not to simply rely on the fact that they are ancestors of Abraham. And he warns them of the wrath to come and warns them of the axe of the root of the tree ready to be cut down and thrown into the fire. I mean... When I said the good news or the gospel, it was hard to see that, hear that as good news, wasn't it? And I'm sure that's exactly how the people felt. And so the crowds ask him, well, well, what then should we do? It's a question we also ask when we're overwhelmed or feel fearful or feeling helpless and hopeless about the darkness and sin in our world. We say, what should we do? What should we do when we listen to the news and become worried about our country and our state and our community? What should we do when we hear tragic stories of tornadoes in the United States? 
What should we do when the news from our capital troubles us and confuses us? What should we do when the disparities between the rich and the poor keeps growing? What should we do when we hear about school shootings? What should people of faith do? How should we live in these times? And then there's our personal lives. What should we do when we feel weak in our faith? What should we do when we think we've made too many mistakes and there is no way God can love me? What should we do when we believe we're just not doing enough? What should we do when we're worried and overwhelmed by our family or by our job? What should we do when we're overwhelmed with the bills or the repairs that need to be done? What should we do when we're worried and overwhelmed about how we're going to get through Christmas without our loved ones? What should we do? Scripture, ans scripture answers this question for us today. In the Gospel of Luke, John tells the crowds, well, this is what you should do in those times. If you have two coats, give one away. And the same with food. To the tax collectors, he said, hey, be fair and honest in your business dealings. And to the soldiers, he said, don't bully people to get your way and your power. And then Isaiah and Paul give us some things too. Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians, praise God. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again rejoice. So what should we do when we're overwhelmed and we don't know where to turn? I think we could sum that up in two things. Live our faith in the here and the now where we're at, and live with joyful gratitude. So first, live out your faith in the here and now. You see, your future is secure. You don't have to live in fear. Jesus came for you and died for you. You're forgiven. What John is getting is at is that when that's true, when we know that's true, when you know Jesus has come for you, it changes you right now. And John is telling us that following Jesus changes what you do in the here and now. How does it change us? What should we do? Be fair in your business dealings. Don't bully people to get your way and gain power. And give, be generous, so that all will have enough. Do these things in a world that says, if it's legal, it's moral. So go ahead and take advantage of others. Do this in a world that says, if you buy just that one more thing, you're finally going to be happy. Do this in a world that says, hey, watch out for number one, nobody else is going to. Do this in a world that has decided that you can say whatever rude and cruel thing you want to because, hey, freedom of speech, we can. In our daily lives, we have the opportunity to live our faith in the here and now in ways that are overlooked, in ways that the world doesn't necessarily value. And to know that when we do that, God works through us. In the here and now, people of faith, people who follow Jesus, can be different. We can choose respect when we disagree instead of disparaging and rude remarks. We can quit speaking in absolutes when we know sometimes there are gray areas and valid points on both sides of an issue. We can give to the hungry and the homeless. We can be fair to our employees. We can choose kindness and love, which scripture upholds and commands, instead of bullying. These are the ways that God is at work and the way God works through us. What should we do? What we should do is really about living our faith in the here and now. Living as faithful people who are generous and fair and honest and deal with people respectfully. You did that 
just a few weeks ago when we gave, in our noisy offering, bringing our noisy offering, we gave over $700 to ELCA Good Gifts. So another family can have what they need. Actually, several families. And we do that every time we volunteer in the community. We do that when we're neighbors in ways that no one else even knows about. When we daily renew our baptism, seeking forgiveness of where we fall short, and remembering that we're God's beloved children. See, even when we see so many problems in the world and we can be so overwhelmed by them, God is present and at work in the very ways we live out our faith in the here and now each day. This is what John is teaching us. God is working through us in the here and now in our daily lives in this church, and how we live that out. What should we do? I think the second thing we learned today about what we should do is that as enemies surround us, as our worries overwhelm us, because sometimes they do, rejoice in the Lord always. Or in other words, live with joyful gratitude. That seems impossible when life is challenging. But it is our call. Living with joyful gratitude is possible because we know God will guide us and God will give us what we need, even if this Christmas is especially challenging. And you know what? I think we've all had some of those times. Joyful gratitude comes from trusting in the promise that when we rejoice and thank God and leave our worries and our problems with God, that we will find peace, peace that passes all understanding. Yes, the problems may still be there, but now we know that when we trust day by day, we will have what we need to meet the challenge or get through the challenge, that we will come out on the other side of grief. And that no illness, no matter what it is, can defeat us because not even death defeats the people of God. Joyful gratitude to God gives us strength when our family is struggling, when we're ill, when life is overwhelming, and when the world around us seems absolutely hopeless. Yet even in those times, we can rejoice in the Lord always, and again, rejoice. Joyful gratitude helps us with that first part, you know, living a life of faith in our daily lives. And then I think when we rejoice in all God has given us and we trust that we can leave our problems with God, when we have that confidence that there will be peace, it makes it easier for us to reach out and be generous just as John said. What should we do? What should we do for others? I think of those parents and family members in Oxford, Michigan. I mean, generous monetary donations, patches on a football jersey, crowds at a vigil, and touching tributes cannot bring their children back. But those things say, and our call is to say to all people, we're with you. You're not alone. We're walking with you. We will not forget your child. So what should we do? We should care with our words and our actions in ways that remind people they aren't alone in this world. What should we do in the darkness of this world on our long winter days? Be a light. Be a light in a world that can seem overcome with darkness. And then help this church because we're better together. We can do more together, can't we? Help this church be a light so that we can share the good news, the hope that John shared with the people of his time. When you leave this morning, think about the opportunities or the ways that present themselves to you to be more kind, more honest, and more generous. Remember the times, and maybe this will draw you to that, remember the times someone was kind and generous with you. Be it with words of encouragement, 
a helping hand when it was needed? Or remember, remember the time maybe somebody returned the money to you that you dropped? Or when a supervisor or a coworker was patient with you? And think of how that felt. I think of all those Wednesdays my parents came over to be with Adam during those hos that hospital stay and body, body cast. Because you know what? It was in December and January. It's not the best time to travel from Austin to New Ulm. But think of the difference those things made to you. This is how we are called to live in this world. And for people who know their eternal future is secure, what joy it can bring us to make this world that we have in the here and now a better place for all people to live. What should we do? Live a faith-filled life. Trusting God and sharing God's love wherever we are. Live with joyful gratitude. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, turn your worries into requests to God. With joyful gratitude, you will discover that in the busyness, in the chaos, in the grief, in the unknown, in the worries of the world around us, even with all of this, with joyful gratitude to God, we can find peace. And with that, with that peace, you will be set free to share the joy of the Lord with others by the way you live your life of faith in the here and the now. We don't have to save the world. Jesus did that. We just simply need to love others, love others the very way that we've been loved. Amen. We sing once in Royal David City. Please stand as you are able. Now let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God, our guide, in this Advent season, we are seeking the right path, reaching out in the darkness of night. Lead us and help us to hear your word in our lives. When we wonder what then should we do, Show us the way of grace and peace that brings your hope shining like a beacon, casting out shadow and trusting in your promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to all who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day. We especially pray for Merle, Audrey, Russ, Eloise, Dixie, Dave, Marilyn, Sharon, Larry, Joyce, Ken, Anne, Kane, Dave, Adam, Tom, Carol, Pam, Sharon, Con, Linda, Paul, and Linda. We also pray for the family of Jesse Steinberg as they mourn his passing, and we pray for those that we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now I invite you to turn to those around you and share a sign of peace. Peace, everybody. Peace.
Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal. Through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The meal is ready. Christ is the host. Come as you are. All are welcome. Please be seated.
please stand for the communion blessing and prayer. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. And receive the benediction. The God of hope fill us with all joy in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. We, send our, we sing our sending hymn. This is how our children's Christmas program is ending today, and so we end it in the same way after our first service. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.